Hello, and welcome to The Griot. I'm Ebony K. Williams. Now, we are exactly one week away from these crucial high-stakes midterm elections. And with several key races all across the country, those outcomes will determine who controls the House and the Senate. Now, a record number of people have turned out for early voting in a lot of states, including Georgia, where there's been a 60% spike compared to the last midterm cycle. Then in other states, California and Florida, they have each received more than a million mail-in ballots. Now, all of this comes as the U.S. Attorney General is vowing to prevent voter intimidation. This after some people in Arizona say that they felt threatened at drop-off boxes after they were photographed by groups of men with guns. I want to bring in the Griot's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief and Senior White House Correspondent, April Ryan. April, let's start with Georgia. Uh, we know that that is a yeah. knockdown drag out there in that Senate race between Warnock and Walker. We see mm -hmm. yet another woman uh, coming forward saying that Herschel Walker paid for her abortion back in 1993. Now, this is only relevant uh, because the Republican former NFL player is running on an anti-abortion platform. We know he's trying to face off against uh, the Reverend Senator Raphael Warnock. Now, April, if somebody is already going to vote for Walker, do these new allegations even matter? These new allegations matter, especially uh, with Gloria Allred representing uh, the new claimant. Um, we have been seeing an erosion of Herschel Walker's lead even before the abortion debate and even more so now. And what has really caused uh, Herschel Walker to really have to fight for his political life and career is the fact that his son gave voice to these women and infidelity, et cetera. Mm. So Herschel Walker is behind in the polls when it comes to uh, this, this battle royale, if you will, between uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock, who is the current U.S. Senator from uh, the state of Georgia, versus Herschel Walker, the sports legend. Mm, indeed. Now, April, we're going to get to Stacey Abrams in a minute. Mm -hmm. so we'll come back to Georgia. But I do want to talk yeah. about some other key races that you've identified when it comes to what's going to happen with control of the Senate. Talk about yeah. Florida uh, and, and what we should be paying attention to as Val Dennings tries to unseat um, uh, Rubio. Well, the race right now is still too close to call. Mm. But Val Demings has been pulling out every uh, weapon in her arsenal to fight against Marco Rubio. She has said that, you know, he's, his veracity is at stake. Mm. You know, he <laughs> used to be truthful. I mean, she is going in. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, you have to remember, we are still dealing with uh, this ideology against the Democrats, this Trump ideology. Marco Rubio, even though he is not necessarily fond of Donald Trump in many ways, he still is part of that, that group that has this ideology. And that's what's on the ballot. It's not Donald Trump's name, but his ideology. Mm -hmm. Many of these Republicans are fighting. And that's exactly what's going on in Florida. It's the ideology of Donald Trump with Rubio and Val mm -hmm. Demings, a Democrat, and what the Democrats espouse. So that's what we're finding, not just in Florida, we're finding it in North Carolina, we're finding it in Maryland, we're finding mm -hmm. it in every state and every place. This ideology against the Democrats, and let's see who wins out in these races that are still too close to call. Yeah, April, you speak about this uh, Trump ideology, and I think it's a very important point mm -hmm. uh, to North Carolina, my home state. Uh, Trump yeah. has literally endorsed this guy, Ted Bund, uh, mm -hmm. in the, uh, the Senate race there for the Republicans. Yeah. But on the other side, President Obama back out there on the campaign trail stumping for Sherry Beasley Sherry in that Beasley, state. Yeah, yeah how, how do you think that will play out? Again, another race that's too close to call. North Carolina is that purpley state now. You know, I've mm -hmm. got family down there, too, but it's still very red in its ideology. It's still a southern state. And Sherry Beasley is trying to become the first black yeah. woman U.S. senator. She has been uh, named judge. She's been elected to judge. She's, she's done a lot in the state. But the problem is, again, that ideology. And we these races are so close and too close to call. The Republican right now uh, in the polls is leading, but these races are still too close to call. And, I mean, I, you know, years ago I would be able to say, mm, this one might win, this one might not win, or this one might win and this one might not. They're too close to call, just too yeah. close to call. And turnout, April, we know is huge here. And, and just going back to North Carolina for a second, because I have this, uh, mm -hmm. belief that, you know, so goes North Carolina in a lot of these races, April, mm. kind of so goes the U.S., right? Because it is this kind of petri dish. Um, and you've mm. got 
um, you know, counties like Mecklenburg County and Wake County yeah. in North Carolina that, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, are younger, more educated, and mm -hmm. they do really well for Democrat candidates. But the rest yeah. of the state is very, very red. Um, what are the conversations that you're having with these candidates that are trying to kind of turn these purple states red, uh, blue rather? How do they feel about all of this? Well, let me say this. When you talk about North Carolina, let's let's really dig in some of the weeds of North Carolina. You have in Columbus County at the southeastern tip of North Carolina, a situation where this uh, police sheriff was trying to get rid of uh, a lot of these black uh, uh, people who worked in his department. Mm, and mm -hmm. that's the kind of mentality in a lot of these, these, uh, very red spaces. I mean, in that, in that same area, you know, when a lot of the candidates were, were, were supporting, uh, Biden, uh, for president, they were pulling up the signs in that community and they were very Trumpian in their mm -hmm. efforts. And, and when they were marching and, 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 and having these parades for Biden, there is a clear divide in mm -hmm. certain sections in the state of North Carolina. Like you say, in many of the liberal progressive areas, you know, with a lot of the colleges and stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's more liberal and open-minded, but yet it's almost like Georgia. You have these mm. little areas and then there's the rest of the state. So that's what we're dealing with, the ideology that permeates. And it depends upon who goes to the polls and how they're going to the polls. What is leading them to go to the polls and who do they stand for at the polls?